All right, uh, well, War Eagle, um, man, I'm uh, proud of, you know, our, our players, coaching staff last week. Um, proud for the Arvin family to um, get a victory against a really good um, Western Kentucky team. Uh, now we done uh, kind of flipped the page and uh, moved on to the Iron Bowl, so we are we're excited. Um, they got the staff as a team. Uh, you know, we're, we're excited to uh, – have this challenge in front of us to uh, uh, play one of the um, not only the best team, but one of the best coaches to ever um, coach college football. So um, we are we are fired up and uh, looking forward to the atmosphere in Bryant Denny Stadium. Um, so with that, open up with questions. Big Cadillac, uh, just wanted to ask you, Johnny Connor, ABC 3340 in Birmingham, I uh, just wanted to ask you a little more detail about when Coach Saban came to recruit you when he was at LSU uh, back in the early 2000s. What was that like, and what was the meeting like, and were you ever close to going to LSU? Well, um, actually, I stated it was 2001. It was actually 2000, December. Um, and... Um, I did. I, I, I enjoyed the meeting so much that I actually took an official visit. And, um, again, like I say, um, I, I respect uh, Coach Saban, uh, just what he stands for, uh, how he challenges his players, how he pours into his players, uh, the discipline piece of it, um, how, how he's a uh, no-nonsense guy. And, um, you know, his his record and what he's done uh, throughout his career speak speaks for itself, uh, but a uh, man, uh, I, I, I think very highly of him. Um, got the opportunity to have uh, Ronnie Brown play for him, and he, he, he enjoyed him, and, uh, and most of his players that play for him um, truly, and you know, enjoy him as a, not only as a coach, but a person. You know, when you look at this matchup, um, you guys have been running the football, and, and that's kind of been your thing. Pretty good defensive front you go up against. What do you see from Alabama's defense heading into Saturday? Ooh, yeah, they uh, physical bunch, uh, big, long. Uh, we know about, um, you know, Will Anderson. He's a he's he's a handful. Uh, linebackers are down here, physical guys. They can run uh, secondary, very aggressive, long. Um, so we uh, we have a challenge here, but man, we are we are looking forward um, to this opportunity, and uh, you know we are we are going we are going down there to uh, fight um, and and compete, and uh, we are looking forward to preparing this week and see where the chips fall on Saturday. But, um. Hopefully, obviously, you'll get a good day, like the uh, sweater there. Um, Appreciate it. And, you know, I see you. Um, when you look at just these last three minutes, how would you summarize what you've done well, maybe what you haven't done well as a head coach in these first three minutes? Oh, good question. Um, I think uh, some of the things that I, I can uh, I can do better uh, myself, my staff, uh, uh, we can do a better job of putting our guys in position to uh, um, to be better. Um, I you know I'm just a firm believer um, as a coach that um, you know if, if guys are confused or things are not going right, it's you know, it's it's our job as teachers to um, kind of get our point across and get them prepared to play. So, uh, just um, offensively, of course, we know that uh, we got to get better in the pass game. And you know, it, it's just not Robbie. Start with the uh, offensive line, the receivers, uh, us coaches. Uh, we got to come uh, with a better plan uh, when we have opportunity to make plays. Um, we have to uh, take advantage and make the plays because it was some drops and things out there. I think just uh, defensively, just honestly, um, believe that we got to eliminate the explosive plays over the past three weeks. Uh, that's when we get in trouble a lot, as you can see that. 
um, second uh, quarter of that Western Kentucky game. We had a lot of self-inflicted wounds there, our, our, our guys kind of are doing their own thing. But we got back to the bases. Those guys, um, you know, got, got back doing what they coach and um, the rest was history. You know, those guys um, did a good job. Yeah, like, what are some of the advantages you think of, of you guys being so loose heading into the Iron Bowl. You know, sometimes the Iron Bowl decides the division. You know, sometimes it's a it's a massive game. Both teams have ten wins, whatever. What, what do you think are some of the advantages of you guys just, like you said, going in there, fighting, kind of seeing what happens, and, and playing kind of loose right now? Uh, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't say it's a you know, advantage of playing loose. I, I, I think the most part, um, our guys having fun. I, I mean, I played this game, huh? You know, all three levels. And, um, man, it, this game is about striking, it's about playing together, it's about having fun. And, um, you know, these kids are, are having fun and they're playing together. Um, I, I think uh, that's the big thing. Um, look, it, it, it's no magical words. It's no magical speech that uh, I can get these or these coaches. Uh, look, it's the Iron Bowl. And that's basically what I'm tell my guys if, if they can't get up for this game this week, uh, for these seniors, their last game, um, you know, that they're going to be able to put on that uniform, need 24 seniors, then something wrong. Um, so um truly feel like what's on a lot of stuff that's understood really don't need to be said. So um, I'm looking for our guys to co come out, man, and, and fight and compete. And, you know, we're, we're not backing down at all. Yes, you know, all three of those guys are day-to-day um, -day, um, right now. Uh, you know, uh, I know uh, Embo, uh, man, we thought he had a shot last week. So, um, again, he's day-to-day. Uh, -day, so, hopefully we can um, get him back because he, as the season been going, he, he, he's been, his arrow is going up, man. He's. He's gonna be a good player for us, and you know we 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 need all all the bullets and 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 in the gun. We need everybody on deck here. Um, so you know we all need to get as much as people playing as possible, where where we can get fresh and uh, get these guys to the fourth quarter. So, uh, kind of talk about go crazy and the the first play in 2003. How that unfolded? Wow. Um, of course, it was a lead draw, and again, it was a great block by Brandon Johnson on that mic there. Um, <coughs> Officer line did a good job of um, knocking a hole in the defense, and then they got me on the safety, and that's the least I can do. Like I say, is make the uh, safety miss, and the rest was history, man. Uh, usually, whenever you have long runs like that. It, it's a total um, team effort. Thanked off uh, the receivers did a really good job um, blocking downfield. Jerry McIntyre almost tripped me. I almost messed up my moment. Uh, <laughs> can you imagine that? Like, uh, but uh, <clears throat> no. But it was uh, it was uh, it's it's one of like I say, man. It's one of my uh, most memorable plays. Um, in my football career, uh, something I always be proud of, and uh, you know, hopefully we can um, have a couple long runs like that in Brian Denny Stadium. Do you do you hear the crowd coming up when you're while you're running on play like that? Honestly, no. It, it's uh, after the fact, but when you're when your gym is pumping and you're I mean, you're running and you, you know, you're trying to score. It's you kind of phase all that out. But you know, once you cross that goal line, uh, man, during there was was pretty loud that night. Brian Marcus. Uh, yeah, uh, Cadillac. Um, the defense. Um, how proud are you about the way they played the last three games, particularly in the second half? And uh, as a Coach, been more aggressive? Did you ask him to be more aggressive, or is that just how the sort of season's gone on that side of the ball? 
Uh, well, honestly, <clears throat> uh, three weeks ago when um, I had named the interim coach, I, I mean, I, I just kind of told my, all the coordinators, special team from offense to defense is simplicity is best right now. Um, I, mean, I need these guys playing fast. And um, uh, what what we don't got in scheme-wise or player-wise, uh, we we can make it up with our effort, getting 11 guys to the ball. But, you know, we just need these kids to uh, play fast. And, you know, these kids, they're smart. We got great coaches that have been around the game a long time where, you know, as we go, as we get these guys' confidence, the game of football is about confidence. So the more confidence that these guys got of stopping guys and striking guys, where now we can add a little bit here and there. But um, for the most part, just simplifying things and, you know, doing um, doing what our players can actually um, do good. I, I think uh, from defensively and offensively, we are, and special teams, we are taking advantage of that. Go back left, Ryan. Coach, being someone that grew up in the state, what would a win in the Iron Bowl mean to you and your family just growing up knowing this rivalry? <laughs> uh, I mean, first of all, um, you know, um, don't want to ma make this about me. I mean, it, it means so much to me for, for these seniors, to be honest with you. Um, we got a uh, group of guys in that locker room nobody have ever won in Brian Denny Stadium. So um, uh, to uh, come out with a victory, that, that will be uh, huge. But, again, um, and I, I honestly mean this, and, you know, uh, whatever happens on Saturday, um, I want us to enjoy today. We, we the, the process start today. You know, we start our practice, our walkthrough. We start grinding. We start working. So uh, in or, order for us to even have a chance for Saturday, we have to take care of today. And uh, to me, it's our mindset. And um, uh, that is what starting at 5 o'clock, we are not worrying about, you know, Saturday. Like, we have to take care of Monday to give us opportunity uh, to even have a shot on Saturday. Brian, uh, Kel, Carnell, uh, I know you have a lot of pr preparation to go through for it, but are you going to have a chance to have a normal Thanksgiving dinner with your family and stuff like no that? No doubt. I am now. I'm going to eat my um, my chitlins. I'm I'm a, <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating my dressing, my, my, my cornbread, my mama famous cornbread. I'm a uh, turkey, uh, greens. This is a Thanksgiving, Christmas, some of the best times of the year. And uh, regardless of uh, what I got going on, um, I, I value uh, my family time and uh, Lord knows I, I I I value the food, so I'm I'm a <laughs> I, I am I am going to enjoy Thanksgiving. Yes, I am. What about deviled eggs? I make deviled some, eggs. I make some world famous deviled eggs. Do you? Well, yeah. I, I might I might have to take you up on okay. that now. <laughs> deviled eggs, that's my favorite. Nope. Uh, talk about the play of the offensive line. I mean, you guys have had to shuffle some things around. It looks like um, they're they're. They're coming on here down the stretch, especially in the running game. Uh, no doubt, man. I, I love them big guys. Um, for us to win Saturday, it's going to be in the trenches. Um, look, I played the running back position, and I know that we, we get a lot of the credit. A lot of times, we we don't deserve it at all. Um, offensive line, to me, um, it's about five guys up front playing together. Um, and... Um, if if we play together and we fight and we all be on the same page and um, we get tank, Jarquez, those guys' looks and those guys get the break towel because they run clean and press the line scrimmage, y'all. Uh, man, anything can happen. So, uh, man, I'm, I'm very appreciative of uh, those guys up front, the way that they done came together. And they, they, they're fighting. 
no, no quit on them. I know Western Kentucky, Earth, at first half, we were struggling. Uh, challenged those guys, challenged the uh, running backs to, look, we, we are just getting, they're, they're out playing us. They're playing harder. And, man, just just in the past three three weeks, the way that those kids don't respond, they, they respond again. So uh, I'm proud of those guys up front and what, what they done being accomplished. It's, it, it's led, uh, you know, by them to have two bats go over 100 yards. Like, that is back-to-back weeks. Huh. That is, you know, that that's a credit to those guys up front. I'm going to say far right. Justin. Kind of like that. Last few weeks, you guys have been very run-heavy with the backs. How have you seen Robbie kind of handle that and, and you know, continue to lead this offense and, and you know, make plays? Man, you know, um, Robbie as a quarterback, he, he's still evolving, growing. Um, he, he's doing a lot better job of running the show, getting us in the right checks. And, um, look, like I told people, I mean, the, the 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 kid has not played ball in probably two, three years. This is six games, six, seven games that he has played um, big time football, and he's still a young kid. So he he's still learning. But man, the kid is, is a fighter. He's a competitor. Um, a lot of times, you know, now he he just got a ton of a lot of that energy. But man, I I will. I will fight with Robbie uh, any day of the week. But, um, um, but you know, uh, in order for us to, you know, truly win this game, yeah, we're going to have to run the ball, but we also have to take our opportunities in the pass game. We're going to have to convert in the red zone. We're we going to have to be good on third down. So um, I got full confidence in Robbie and his staff of, you know, putting him in the uh, right uh, position and those guys executing the plan. Um, <clears throat> what does it mean to you to be the first African-American man to coach the Iowa? Wow. Um, you know, I, I I seen that this morning, and honestly, I uh, felt bad because I, I sometimes get so caught up in the moment where I'm it, – it didn't even hit me, honestly, uh, until I seen it this morning, and I was like, wow, like, that's pretty cool. Like it, it's all this is like a man, like a just just a shot. What a blessing it is, and you know, honestly, um, I kind of been this my whole life. I'm sure uh, later on I will reflect on it and truly, truly enjoy it. Um, but man, you know, right now I'm just just in the moment. You know, I'm just. Doing, doing, doing what I can each and uh, every day. You know, I know the, the responsibility of uh, having that, of being the first of any to do anything. So, man, I'm honored. I'm blessed. Um, I get credit to the people that before me that paved the way uh, for myself to have this opportunity because, Lord, no, it's a lot of guys that look just like me that actually <laughs> – can can do a doggone good job in this seat. So, man, I'm I'm a, I'm a honor, but uh, I'm just honestly I'm just in the moment and just chopping wood, just trying to uh, win a ball game. That's it. That's that's all I'm focused on right now. Okay, like you 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 lived a coaching staff that tried to had to work with somebody else's offense in 2003. You saw that. Just talk about how difficult the job has been to take over somebody else's offense in the middle of a season and and do the things that, that Will and, and Ike and you guys have done on offense. You know, that is a that's a great point. Uh, I lived in 2003, and that, that didn't, as you know, coming in ranked number one that year, top three, that, that, that didn't go too well. Um, so... Uh, for our uh, offensive coaches from uh, Ike Hillier, um, from uh, Will Friend, from uh, Coach McDaniels, Co- Coach Hartland, um, Hartline, I'm sorry, from uh, Coach Bernardi, and our support staff that help us on the offense end. Look, they done done an incredible job. Um, like, like you say, too, 
um, to take offense that, um, you know, uh, that a lot of people are not familiar with, but to kind of uh, try to speak the same language because of the kids that learn this one way and still put these kids in the best position to uh, succeed to give them a chance. Man, my hats goes off to those guys, and look, they're a heck of a coaches, and I'm I'm honored to be able to um, be, be, be in the paint with those guys. Mark, you got a lot of guys who played in the Iron Bowl last year. Uh, that was a tough one, quadruple overtime. What would it mean to those guys to, to win this year? Everything. I mean, for one, it's, it's their last time, a lot of these guys, last time that they ever going to, uh, let's say, forget Auburn football, last time they ever going to play football. Like, this game of football is so special. It's why you all here. It's why I, I got the opportunity to be here at Auburn. It's why a lot of you guys in this locker room, this coaches, it's why we're all together because of that ball. So uh, a lot of you guys' identity is wrapped up into ball, so man, it, it's and f to to go out a winner uh, against your rival and the Iron Bowl, like what better way um, is that to go go out? So um, no, I know those guys, man. They are uh, wanna want their uh, legacy here or be to be to be solidified here. So uh, what better way um, to go out with a bang? So. It'll, it'll be wild. That'll be pretty cool uh, to be able to get, get that for these seniors. Jeff, uh, Jeff, you're by far the highest profile person who's been thrust into a new role these past few weeks, but, but not the only one on the staff. You mentioned it a little bit a minute ago, but the, the job that Kendall Simmons and, and the other coaches who have, who have elevated and taken on new responsibilities, what have you seen from that? Oh, my sorry. Yeah, Kendall Simmons did not name Kendall. That's right. You're right. Uh, wow. Um, honestly, uh, Kendall been here since 2019. Uh, when, whenever I got him here, and I got the opportunity to play with Kendall, and uh, so always a guy, man, that just serve and a guy just poured into people's lives and worked his tail off each and every day. And uh, one thing I see from that officer line uh, room, man, is I see the trust and the respect that they have for him. Uh, he's he's a man of few words, but you know when he do speak, I mean just the wisdom he have, the knowledge he have. You got to think uh, two Super Bowl ring, uh, nine years in the N NFL, all pro, uh, maybe all Pro Bowl. You know, I mean the the, the guy is a, was a, a great football player, but even a better person. So uh, you know those guys are very lucky to be able to be coached by a guy who. Um, has that kind of uh, resume, but not only that resume, but is a high character man that truly uh, cares about them. And I think they can resonate with that and uh, connect it uh, with Kendall in that way. So, man, I'm, I'm fired up for Kendall uh, to have this opportunity. Anything else? No, I'm sorry, one more here. Right. Millie Stewart, the Auburn Princeman. How are you going to coach the freshman going into this game, especially McPherson, on just like the mental and physical aspect that it is going to take on them? We're we going to start today. Um, I'm a firm believer that um, your preparation um, each and every day, how you prepare will, will get you prepared to play on Saturday. So um, we need supreme focus. Um, we need to be locked in. Um, whenever it's our time to take reps. And when we're not taking reps, we need to take mental reps um, because uh, what happens is um, if you're always, you know, ready to play ball, you 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 never have to get ready. Uh, that's just who you become, you know, as a person. And I just know the preparation part of it is super big, and that starts in practice. And that will alleviate a lot of anxiety, a lot of nerves, because now you got reps of doing it. You got more confidence. Like I told, the game of football, I mean, life, anything you do, it's about confidence. So the more you see the looks, the more you prepare and practice, the better you prepare, 
the better you will play on Saturday. I mean, I'm I'm not uh, like like I tell them. I'm not telling them guys something I read in a book. It's something I lived and experienced. So, um, McPherson, man, that kid, <laughs> that, that kid, that kid gonna be okay. He, he he's the last person I'm worrying about. I promise you. Coach Fetting has done, especially this past month, and then combined with the challenge of facing the Alabama offense. Wow. Um, tap my head off, uh, tip my head off to Coach Smith and that defense. I mean, come on. Uh, I just read a stat, man, where in the, uh, the previous three games before, um, you know, uh, I got named, named the uh, interim head coach. I think Auburn was uh, giving up on defense over 500 yards, like 532 yards. And uh, in the last three games, they're, 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 they're giving up like 320-some yards. So it's like 200-some yards uh, different that those guys playing in. Again, that, that goes back, I think, I, 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 I think very highly of Smith. I mean, he's a technician. He's a teacher. He knows the game of football in and out. And he can get those players to uh, truly play for him, along with the rest of uh, Coach Rock, Coach Etheridge, uh, Coach uh, Brumball. Like, those guys are doing a really good job, man. And they got those guys flying around. They're playing Auburn defense. Uh, to me, defense about effort. I mean, effort. Getting 11 men to the ball. You know, whenever you do that, you create takeaways. You know, you breaks fall your way, that relentless effort. So, uh I'm proud of Coach Smith and that staff for what, what they're doing on defense. It's going to be a challenge with, you know, we got Bryce Young, who I think is uh, probably um, the best, one of the best players in the country. Um, so to go up against against him is going to be uh, going to be interesting. But, look, we are, we are looking forward to it. And these young men, they're definitely uh, up for the challenge. And uh, it, this is going to be uh, – this is going to be a good one. going to be a good one. Coach, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.